There's so much I can appreciate from games that have a unique look and lore that developers like Game Kitchen have crafted, especially such as having a recognizable yet fresh take on visuals and settings that allow games to truly stand out amongst the crowd. Yet I couldn't help but to feel their newest game relied too much on storytelling which ended up hurting some aspects of the gameplay. My name is Victor Aparicio and this is Noisy Pixel's review of Blasphemous. The opening of Blasphemous explains that a curse called the Miracle has struck the land of Kostovia, creating a horrid plight that has driven people to madness with endless guilt and anger. An unknown figure, simply called the Penitent One, is tasked with lifting the curse that has a trapped world in an endless cycle of death. This is done by taking hold of Mia Culpa, a sword forged in guilt, to defeat various enemies and bosses that occupy dungeons, churches, and hilltops in the game world. From there, the story becomes much more nuanced. Every item that the player picks up and uses, as well as abilities and power-ups, has a piece of background and origin to its existence. These descriptions give the items a place in the world, and the lore is available to players who want it. The story ends up feeling too heavy-handed at times though. I can see the need to have writing be as outrageous as the visuals, but phrases like Mother of Mothers and Brotherhood of the Kissers of Wounds just come off as cheesy. Luckily, the gameplay in Blasphemous has a nice blend of what has been done in side-scrolling Metrovanias and Souls games in the past. For example, defeating enemies drops Tears of Atonement, which is used to pay for items and upgrades for your sword. There are also checkpoints that replenish your health, and an open world style map that grows over the course of the game has you revisiting areas multiple times. Further into the game, players begin to find rosary breeds that increase stats and shrines that unlock new abilities. There are also dark orbs that are found throughout the game that all look the same. These orbs can carry anything from quest items, collectibles, rosary beads, and journals. So when entering beyond the 5 hour mark, players may start to feel as though they should start being rewarded. Yet what they find are collectibles and quest items that don't necessarily add to your abilities or experiences. And yes, the quest items do eventually lead to an area that opens up but the path is never really clear. Things like exploring off the beaten path also never yield rewards to make your adventure feel any easier either. As for the action in Blasphemous, monsters do pose a good challenge. Also jumping and dodging felt responsive, but there's something of the hitboxes that seem a little off when you can see your attack that should have connected. With that said, after some time I became a bit more comfortable with the systems and ended up having a good time. Look, I like Blasphemous. It's a game that's unique in presentation despite the slight disconnect with its mechanics. Most of my criticisms stem from whether or not Game Kitchen focused too much on heavy lore that affected the game from feeling more tangible, or limited the team from exploring more innovative gameplay mechanics. But if everything I said is a non-issue, then you'll have fun with this title. A fans of the genre, if you will. I'm just not so much of a fan of having lore completely take over a world I rather explore on my own. Noisy Pixel is giving Blasphemous a 7 out of 10. Thanks for watching. You can check out our full review at noisypixel.net. Noisy Pixel is run by a group of gamers who work hard to deliver news, reviews, previews, and more. Please subscribe to keep up with all of our future content.